reconciles with him. Glory. Hallelujah. So we see that this is intentional. We must by a deliberate act of our wills choose to be empty in order that we can be filled. We can't be filled until we're willing to empty ourselves out. We got to be willing to empty. You know, a lot of people aren't willing. They, they, they want all the things that they want. They want nice cars. Nothing wrong with that. They want motorcycles and four-wheelers and boats. and they, You know, but they get themselves so filled uh, with worldly things, they have no room to fill themselves with God. Right. Glory. Now, God doesn't want us to just give up our way of life in that sense because he loves us. But he wants us to have the good things. And quite often we're not looking at the good things. We're not. I was sharing with Sharon Turk this morning about her mother's house that wasn't their choice, had to be auctioned off. Anybody that was really paying any attention would have went, if they had, were renting, they would have bought it. With the taxes and the payment on the house, you could live for less than $500 a month and you can't rent three bedrooms for $500 a month. Nowheres. Glory. But sometimes we don't see the benefits that God puts before us because it might have a little work attached to it. Glory. And with a little work attached to it, we'd rather bypass it. So we never get ourselves filled with all the good things that God has for us. Now as we go through this story this morning, you're going to see that. I mean, we've, we've tackled Gideon many times. We've talked about Gideon, and we talked about Gideon, and we talked about Gideon, and that was good. But what made the 300 men so powerful? Have you ever talked about that or ever heard a sermon on that? What made these 300 men so powerful? So powerful that God rejected a whole bunch of men. And then he rejected another whole bunch of men. Now that should wake us up. I don't want to be one of those two groups that's rejected. I don't know about other people, but boy, that wakes me up. And you remember that they had many vessels that they had borrowed, and we're not talking about the woman that filled all the pans. We're talking about Gideon. We're right in that same chapter. We haven't left it. And they borrowed all these under God's commandment, but his main commandment was they had to be empty. They had to be empty. He couldn't use them if they were not empty. Glory. He had a specific reason. He knew exactly what he was going to do. Glory. I'll tell you, that's so important. So important. Empty. Having nothing inside. Hollow. To be of no worth. Boy, we don't like that one, do we? No significance. Meaningless. Lifeless. Void. We don't like any of those things. So we try to hang on to things. Every one of us wants to be worth something, right? Well, you can't be worth anything at all until you empty yourself out and allow God to fill you with himself. Amen. Glory. You know, we have people get upset because they can't do this, they can't do that. Everybody think in the world wants to sing. I did that once. He had a good voice too, done a lot of singing. Remember those days, Barb? <laughs> Glory. And all the ones God said, did I call you to be a singer? Not that I couldn't do it at times. That wasn't what he called me for. I decided to play the guitar, you know? Man, I could get up here and play the guitar. And I played for a while and practiced and the Lord said, uh, 
Did I call you to play the guitar? Uh, no. I, I, I don't know. I hope you're not like me. I'm slow at times at learning. So then I went to the banjo. And God said again, uh, did I call you to play the banjo? Not that there was anything wrong with it. There was a purpose. There was a plan. There was a call on my life. There were things that God wanted me to do. And all these other things would have only interfered. They'd have been in my way. They would have hindered me. They would have slowed me down. Glory. Empty. Remember? Having nothing inside. Glory. Now this emptiness that we're speaking of is a heart condition. I mean, he wouldn't want me to go home and totally empty out my house. Because then I'd have no chair to sit on. No bed to sleep in, you know. We're talking about a heart condition. It's an attitude. It's, it, it has our disposition. Now, what's in our heart? Really, our heart, not the heart that beats, not that the heart that the doctors worry you about having a heart attack over, but when the Bible talks of heart, it's talking about your spiritual man, the real you. This, this outside shell is not the real me. Glory. We're all spirit beings. We have a soul and we have a body. Glory. The spirit being, the real you. The man on the inside, that's what God wants. That's what God is, is working towards. You know? And when we first come to him, every one of us is weak. You know, we're hopeless. We're helpless. We're powerless. I mean, if we're honest, we may think we've got it all. But spiritually, we don't. We've got to empty ourselves out in order to be everything that God wants us to be. It is a life wholly given up to God. I, wherever God tells me to go, and I think this will be it, but if he told me to go to Africa tomorrow, you'd never see anybody pack their bags any faster than me. You say, what? Oh, I love it overseas. These people are hungry over there. I mean, they come to stay all day, all night. Last time I was over there, they said, can you preach five times a day? I said, yes, I sure can. I mean, that's strange. They said, can you preach an hour or longer each time? I said, yes. That don't sound like church in America, does it? I mean, 45 minutes, we got to be out the door. They came because they were hungry. They came to receive. They had given up everything. You'd watch them coming. You'd see the lights coming. Because as soon as the sun decides to go down, it gets dark over there. We had some just come back. When it's time to get up, the sun comes up and it's daylight. It's not like here. Glory. And these people had given their whole lives to God. Whole. It's a life that is totally sustained by God. God's my source. God's my need. Glory. You know, when we learn that, we no longer have a problem with money. Really? I gave more to the tent meeting than I got my offering. And yet, I'm not broke. I got a $20 bill here. I got a $100 bill laying by my computer. I'm not broke. Because my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. But if I start getting tight with this, I tried to give this away this morning. 
Couldn't do it. Sorry. They thought I needed it worse than now. Well, I don't. Glory. Hallelujah. Still got it. Whew. Glory. The minute I would, if I was to start hanging on to her or looking for all the freebies, with the wrong attitude of keeping all the sales in every store. Uh, no longer is God my total source. Think about this. Be honest. All the ones I'm relying upon, the ads in the newspaper, you know, the sales in the store. Not that God won't allow us to take advantage of that, but when we begin to make that our supply, God backs off, and suddenly we find ourselves in a bind again because we're hoarding the money. We're trying to hang on to it. How many know you can't take it with you when you go? <laughs> Glory. And somebody says, well, the Bible says save up an inheritance for your children and your children's children. It does. But I'm going to look at my children. And I'm going to look at my children's children. And are they going to use it for God? If not, I'll spend it before I go. Right. Amen. Dan knows. I'm not going to leave it to them for them to blow on things of the devil. Glory. I give it all to God. What are we talking about? Gaining the power that God has for us. Hallelujah. And the only way we can do that is we've got to be holy, completely sustained by God. Glory. Hallelujah. I like to bit somebody's head off the other day. They come to read some reports of my wife. And they were doing a good job. And then they wanted to look at me, and that's fine if you do. And they took one look. And they said, I can see you're going to lose your toes. I said, no, I am not going to lose my toes. I mean, this guy's not God. He's not God. And because my legs were swelled up because of the heat, that doesn't mean I'm going to lose my toes. Maybe that's what the textbooks told him. But I had news for him. I said, my faith is in God. Glory. My, my feet aren't swelled up. The heat went down. Notice that? Glory. Wow. You go to the doctor. They check you and your heart's fast or your blood pressure's up or something. They say something's wrong. You say what? And what do they tell you? Nine times out of ten, what do they tell you? You got some virus. I ask them all, what's the name of the virus I got? Oh, well, we don't know. I'm serious. I got nothing against them. But I'm going to trust God. Now, you remember the vine? We're not preaching on the vine, but it has to be in my sermon. <laughs> the branches. Who are the branches? Draws their life from the vine. It's, it's interesting if you read that because it clearly says the vine, who is the vine, can do absolutely nothing without the branches. But the branches can do absolutely nothing without the vine. The two are one. All of our strength, all of our source, all of our power, all of our ability comes from the vine. But we bear the fruit. The vine cannot bear the fruit. We bear the fruit. That's what the Bible says. I didn't write it. Glory. So here we see that Israel is facing her enemy. 
And as usual, God chooses some very, very foolish weapons. A clay pot and a candle. That's it. Glory. Judges 7.16 And he, Gideon, divided the 300 men into three companies and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the, the pitchers. No sword, no spear, no knives, no shield. Just a trumpet, a clay pot, and a candle. And like I said before, if we wake up and listen to this story, we're the clay pot. That's who we are. Glory. And it's God that lights our candle. The Bible's very clear on that. Glory. Now, Judges 7.20. And the three companies blew the trumpet and broke the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hand, not their right. There's a reason for that too. We won't get into that. And the trumpet with their right hand to blow with. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and Gideon. What sword? That's right. I heard that. Who said that? Say it louder. Thank you. The Bible is very clear when it tells us to put on our armor. The sword is the word, the spoken word, the rhema, the rhema word. Glory. Now, what was so special about the pictures? They weren't beautiful. They didn't have any particular shape or design. Yeah. They hadn't done anything in the past, except maybe pour water out of them. Now, the importance wasn't the houses that they came from. They weren't made out of silver or gold or brass. Clay. Boy, we get into Ezekiel and he talks about those clay pots, don't he? There's three things it tells us. First, they were available. Are you available? Or is your time so taken up you can't be available? I like the God, but really I got to, you got to what? I mean, we hear excuses all the while. And the excuses won't get you into heaven. Number two, they were empty, but they were fillable. You could fill them. You could fill them. And they were breakable. I mean, as God gives me this, I thought, wow, that's so true. If we aren't breakable, we're no good. And we still got too much of self. We hear these preachers say, well, we got two spirits now, you know, or two natures. No. I sure hope not. I hope your one nature died and was nailed to the cross with Jesus. That's the old nature. That's not alive, or shouldn't be alive. If it is alive, something's wrong. Because you can go to any cemetery you want, and talk to any tombstone that's there, and I can guarantee you, it will not talk back. If it does, look around, because somebody's probably standing behind you talking. Glory, spit on it. Yeah? I could tell you other things to do too, but I won't. And I guarantee you, it won't say a word. Why? It's dead. Christians sometimes haven't died. And Christ cannot live his life in us and through us if we're still hanging on. Galatians 2.20. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And he said, wait, listen carefully. 
Yet not I. It's not me. What's the difference between the sun and sin? The I. The I. The O is nothing. Well, I did this. I did that. I. Some lady said to me, I liked your wedding. It's the first time I ever heard humor in place in the wedding. I said, isn't the wedding supposed to be joyful? I mean, is it, is it a time of gloom? No. Right. <laughs> Glory. So Paul goes on to say, but Christ liveth in me in the life, get this, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Notice he's not living his own life no more. He doesn't get up in the morning and sit down with his wife and say, well, honey, what are we going to do today? Maybe we should go swimming. Or I want to go out and golf first. Uh-uh. They sit down and say, what does God want us to do? He might let you do all those other wonderful things, don't get me wrong, but they're seeking God first. Matthew? Matthew what? Jerry? What's it say? I mean, how many, how many want a nice house? How many want a nice bank account? How many want nice clothing, nice car? You, you know, how many want that? tells you right there how to do it all. Amen. Seek God first. Amen. And the other things will be added to you. But we try to seek things first and nothing is added to us. Hmm. Wow. The cross is the key to receiving power. That's what happened to these men. The power of the Holy Spirit can only come to the ones who have fully entered into the power of the cross and been saved. You see, we can't get the power until we're saved. Disciples didn't even have it. It said, after, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. But we can't get the power until we're saved. Glory. Glory. The cross is the key to receiving power. Glory. The cross is not for sin, but for self. Jesus paid for the sin. Glory. Yes, Jesus died. He was our substitutionary sacrifice, you know. But we have to go to the cross to get delivered. That we can love like Christ wants us to live. And if he hadn't died on the cross... You know, the, the cross is a place of death. You know why the Protestants never wear Jesus on the cross? That's right, he's not on the cross. You go to my house, you won't find one picture, statue, or anything that has Jesus on the cross because he's not on the cross. He's risen. He's seated at the right hand of God. And I realized that it must be I'm dead. I must be buried. It's no longer I, but Christ Jesus that lives in me and through me. Have you ever thought about that? Glory. Ooh. The self-life keeps us from experiencing the power life. God's not going to give you power if you haven't surrendered to him. He's not, you know, people are waiting to win the lottery. And we say, why do all the savior, uh, the unsaved win the lottery? Because God allow them to win it because he knows it's not going to hurt them. They're already unsaved. He's concerned about you and I. What are we going to do with it if we get it? Is it still going to belong to him? Or are we going to blow it? And give up church, give up everything? Think about it. 
Glory. Not that he wouldn't give it to you. Hallelujah. The power of God is nothing more than the life of Christ being manifested in the place of the self-life. That's when we get to the place, I don't know if you've ever been there, and somebody slaps you on one cheek, you can turn to them the other. I always wondered if I'd ever get to that place, and I found out that I could. I had a lady crack me right side the face. She walked right down the aisle, demon possessed. I saw her coming, and she walked right up, and she said, whack, and I looked right at her, and I said, well, Jesus still loves you. I don't know why she was mad at me. I hadn't done anything. But she hated me because I loved Jesus. Glory. No big deal. Hallelujah. Only as the branch gives up its own life can it be sustained and empowered by the life of God or the life of the vine. You go out there and produce a a vine. Cut the branches off and just tie them on there, you know. Don't do it in my grapevine, please. I want some grapes. Because I wouldn't have no grapes. I wouldn't have no fruit. I wouldn't have no righteousness. I wouldn't have nothing. This all comes from Christ Jesus. We don't manifest it. We, we don't make it happen. When I lay hands on the sick and they're healed, it's not me. It's Christ Jesus flowing through me. It's the power of God moving through me. Glory. Hallelujah. We haven't even been up to Syracuse to lay hands on that little baby. Dan did. Glory. And yet the baby's getting better every day. Why? We sent the word and healed him. Who's the word? Oh, glory. You're doing good today. I love you. Hallelujah. Glory. When we quit trying and start trusting and quit wrestling and start nestling, you know what it means to nestle? You got husbands and wives here, they know. You know? Glory. Whew. We'll experience the power of God. We try it ourselves, we're not going to get it. Jacob did not prevail over the angel in his strength, but in his weakness. He was totally wore out, but he's not letting go. He's not letting go until he gets a touch of God. Now, he was smote in the thigh, you remember that? Glory. I talked about his walk, his self-life, his walk. It was taken away. And it became a life of walking for God. You now the, the cross exposes our self-life, our emptiness. Glory. The self-life, it, it asserts the thought that self-efforts and good works, they don't achieve anything. Glory. But with God... With God, everything is possible. We can be whatever we want to be. Matter of fact, Randy told me, and I got a chuckle out of it, and uh, they quit paying me for my one book, which is fine. God told me to write that book. I wrote that book. I wrote other books. And it's selling for $43 now? $45. $45. That's a used copy. And I said, praise God. And somebody said, well, you're not getting the money. What are you praising God for? It, it's still moving. People are buying it. That's what God wanted for it. Glory. I got no problem with it. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to lose my salvation. And if I was to try to get my money, it'd probably cost me three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 to hire a lawyer. Come on. Glory. Wow. The cross tells us that we are 
the self life, good for nothing, therefore we can do nothing. The only thing we, self life, is good for is to be crucified. Wow. Buried. <laughs> Receive the new created life, the new creation. And that, that's what it's for. Receiving Jesus Christ, becoming the new creation. Becoming something. Now this is the pathway to power. Huh? <laughs> I mean, he, he takes our empty vessels. He fills it with light. He breaks us that the light can be seen by everybody and anybody. Oh, I'll tell you. It's a pathway to power. Accepting Jesus Christ to deliver us, to set us free. To make of us that new creation. He didn't just save us. Read it. We're new creations. Wow. John 14, 12. Except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die. That's talking about us. It abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Much fruit. Somebody told me once I could never remember how many kernels are on an ear of corn. How many does? Somebody knew. And yet you only plant on one. You know, normally you have three, if not four, ears of corn on one stalk. Sometimes more. You only planted one little kernel. And now you've got all these kernels. That's the fruit. That's what happens when we die. I'm not talking about physical death. Glory. But, you know, most people aren't willing to walk that way. That's why they never get the power. Yeah. That's why when we had, in the natural, one of the worst forms of people walking around on our campground and some mamas being so dumb that we kept eyes on them continually, until they got delivered, I think every one of us should have saw that. I mean, when Nikki come to me, one of her babes, that's Nathan's wife, she saw it. I'll tell you, I was blessed. I said, good girl, good girl, good girl. We're living in a time when the bottomless pit has been opened according to scriptures. The four worst angels that ever lived on the face of the earth have been loose. We're seeing it. We're hearing it. The man that tried to eat another guy up, you know, and he wasn't on any drugs. They said no drugs. No drugs. They tested him. No drugs. Demons. Demons are the worst type. We need to know what's going on around us and around our kids. And the only way we'll know that is getting closer to Jesus because he knows everything. That these gifts can operate in us. David saw it. And so the last night of the service, in boldness of the Holy Ghost, he says to him, you got demons, would you like to be delivered? Somebody made excuses. They were asked that. One other day, and they begin to come with all the excuses. This guy said yes, and David got to pray for him. Whew. Glory. I'll tell you, the, that's how we get to the place we can receive power. That's how we get to the place that God can use us. That's how we get to the place that the miracles, the signs, and the wonders flow through us. Whew. I don't know where we are in... Ustream, we're number two or three. I don't know where we are in the other one. What's the other one? YouTube. But we're hearing for countries that we never heard from before. <coughs> <coughs> we're
where whole churches are listening. God is doing something. This was the best camp year. If you'd never been here before, this was the best camp year we ever had. We saw miracles, mighty miracles, mighty miracles, glory. And the last night when we were praying for everybody, all the ministers were up there, and each one was separated, praying for different people. And some people said, why didn't you ask that person? They're not a minister. They hadn't spoke there. Matter of fact, they were trying to get a guy out of a wheelchair one night and having no luck. And I was in here and finally I went out. Glory. Because somebody told me, somebody was Sharon Dirk dead, or Lee. You know who's standing up there? And I thought, oh no. How can they get this guy a miracle, get him out of the chair, when you got a demon-possessed person standing right there continually laying hands on him. Yes, and the other guy was there that needed deliverance. <sighs> Glory. We got them out of there, and guess what? The guy was out of the wheelchair, and he took some steps. Glory. Yes. And we looked around, and the one guy that had been there, he vanished. Glory. Uh, he may have still remembered me from years and years ago, but he decided, I'm going. <laughs> Glory. We had a guy on the land that he was bad. And finally, he was bothering all the houses. And I never stopped to think, you see, my dad raised us. We've never been afraid of anything in our lives. No. Nothing. That's why I was such crazy when I was in the military. And I wasn't afraid, you know. And he'd been to the houses for the second time begging, and that was it. I got in my car, I drove down here, he was sitting on the bench out here, eating one of those cans of soup somebody gave to him, and I said, get in this car and get in this car now, or I'm getting out of this car, and I will put you in this car. Oh, no, no, no. He got in. He said, boy, you're just like my dad. I said, you said you want to go to the library? I'm taking you to the library. But don't come back here. And I took him to the library. And I probably should have been more careful. But I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about the people on the property. He hadn't got to Gwen's house, but she was alone up there. He'd been to Noel's twice, but Randy was home. Glory. He'd been to Carol's. There was no men there. Glory. He'd been to my house. It was time for him to go. And the last thing he said to me, I'm using this in closing. The last thing he said, would you pray for me? He's supposed to have been a minister and give it up to be a politician. I said, Sure. I'd be glad to pray for you. What do you want me to pray? He says, pray that I find a rich woman and I can marry her. And I said, what? <laughs> and I put up my window and drove off. <laughs> and I did not pray for him. <laughs> Father, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're still doing. We thank you for the miracles. We thank you for the healings. And Father, just place within their heart if they really want that power, if they want more, to give all of their self to Jesus, to surrender all. That'd be the happiest life they've ever had because I sure enjoy it. And Father, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want prayer for anything at all, we're here. We're here.